Yo, what's up, SciFam? It's your boy, Nickel here, and today we are going to review some of the information that we have learned about the teenage brain. So we're going to put a title on this page here that is titled Typical Teens, so that we can look at what is up with a typical teenage brain. So with our title, Typical Teens, we're going to dive on in, and the first thing that we're going to remind ourselves is that the teenage brain is not fully developed. It is still growing. Now, there's different parts of our brain though, and it's not like the whole brain is still maturing. A part of our, of our brain is actually fully mature at 11 or 12 years old. This part of our brain is like the basic part of our brain that understands pleasure and pain, and it's things that like all kids learn and the things that kids master throughout childhood, that is our limbic system or our limbic system part of our brain. So the limbic system is what children develop over their childhood. As an adolescent, then you start to actually develop a new part of your brain and you are able to, because your limbic system is mature, now you can move on and you can start to develop and grow and learn in the areas of your brain that are more complex. So the prefrontal cortex is the part, prefrontal cortex is the part of our brain that is still maturing and it still matures into your 20s. So as an adolescent teenager, um, you are just starting to like get some of this work done on your prefrontal cortex and it will continue until you're in your 20s. So the maturing brain, as we mature and as our brain learns and grows, our maturing brain is going to adapt, the maturing brain adapts to its environment. So regardless of where you live, one thing that your maturing brain does is that it understands the culture and the customs of the area around you as well as the language. Now in order to do this, um, as we learned in our last unit about the brain, um, for our brain to mature, we know that we need to gain white matter so as our brain matures and adapts to its environment, it's going to gain white matter and it's going to prune the gray matter. Because the white matter is that connection between the neurons and the gray matter is the actual neuron. So if I were to draw a picture here of some different neuron cells, if I only use a few of these different connections, and if I continue to, my environment causes me to continue to use these connections, then I'm going to strengthen these connections by adding white matter, which is the myelin, between these so that they become nice and thick and well uh, or easy to use. And then these two over here that I don't use, my body would prune these and get rid of those because they're not useful for me anymore because of my environment. So the teen brain learns many things. Um, as you're a teenager, the things that you really are going to be um, practicing is things like decision making and also prioritization. So knowing, you know, if you want to hang out with your friends and your room is dirty and your parents I tell you that your room has to be clean before you hang out with your friends. It's that idea that, hey, get your, get your job done before you actually go out and hang out with your friends. Or you might make a different decision and go hang out with your friends and think that you'll do your room later. Well, that's something that you might need to, uh, to practice with your parents and see what happens. And, uh, you know, you're, you're still learning as a teenager there. So decision making and prioritization are some things that you're practicing. Also planning and organizing. So especially with school, in seventh grade, a lot of times in the beginning of seventh grade, students struggle with planning and organizing which assignments they need to do, what their homework is, what different teachers' expectations are. But as they go throughout middle school and get into high school, they kind of get this skill mastered, or at least some students master that skill. Another thing teens are learning is to delay gratification. So maybe like saving up your money when you get paid. Instead of just spending it on some candy, you might save it up so you can buy something cooler, like a new skateboard or something. Um, also resisting impulses. So not just punching someone after they say something mean to you, but maybe actually 
making the decision not to react and try to de-escalate the situation instead of just being impulsive. And lastly, you're also practicing controlling your thoughts and emotions. And especially your thoughts when you become emotional and your emotional self when you have different types of thoughts. These are things that you are still, the teen brain is learning and practicing all of these things. So therefore, since you're still practicing those things, some typical qualities of teenagers, when we look at our society, uh, you know, when you look back on your teenage years and you look at other teenagers um, in your life or as you grow older, things that we're constantly seeing in teenagers is that usually teenagers have some type of risk-taking tendency. They enjoy taking risks. Um, they are also um, highly involved in social networking or developing their social network. And this doesn't mean that they're on social media, but they're typically uh, trying to network with one another. Also, uh, seeking sensations and rewards. So maybe you want to get the sensation of excitement or maybe you're looking to get some type of special um, reward for doing something. These are things that teenagers are constantly seeking is to get those sensations um, like a, the adrenaline rush or a happiness um, or even trying to invoke negative sensations in other people and then also gaining rewards like feeling good after accomplishing something like winning a race. Also, teenagers are typically starting to find some form of romantic attraction um, with some other partner or some other someone else that they become attracted to romantically. Um, and the most crazy, awesome thing about being a teenager is that you have a high degree of neuroplasticity. So regardless of what happened in your childhood, you are gaining the ability to change your brain, to cause your brain to be like a plastic where it can mold and form based on the new environment that you're creating. And that's why it's so important that you explore the world around you, that you try new things and you take some risks because your brain will respond to that. It will grow and develop as you continue to um, challenge yourself. So go out there, be a teenager that is working towards positive effects and not trying to um, you know, create negative effects out there. But hey, we're all still learning. Uh, you're all still learning, especially with that teenage brain of yours. So I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.